Hi there, this is Sean White from XTC Australia. And today I have the privilege and honor of speaking with Selwa Benhaba. Is that how you spell your, pronounce your name, Selwa? Selwa Benbaha. Benbaha. Okay. Um, I'm, looking forward, maybe... I'm looking forward to this discussion because uh, it's going to be the opportunity for, uh, for uh, the audience to understand what we're doing at Red Phoenix and what I'm doing more specifically as well. But how about you just give everyone a little bit of an idea of uh, how you came into the position and um, what sort of skills you brought in and what sort of work have you been doing? So um, I'm responsible uh, for um, uh, institutional partnerships and working group committees. How I came to do this is because um, in my background for about 15 years, I've been a uh, producer for conferences and uh, I would say uh, content uh, in different um, you know, industries, uh, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's, it was banking, um, I touched on to uh, also politics, G20, G G8 at the time, and so on. So um, I have, my background is more like economy. You know, uh, yeah. so, um, sure. how I came about to do this this job today is that uh, back in 2018, I was looking at ways to hedge the economy, and uh, I could sense that there was gonna something was gonna happen, maybe something of the scale of the 2008 crisis. Uh, sure. But uh, you know, I was looking at uh, how how in case of you know quantitative easing if you know inflation and so on uh, or other ways to 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 safeguard the value of imagine that. yeah <laughs> imaginably having all that experience in the economics and and those other sort of industries you'd work in you, you had a bit of an idea the cycles um how, how did you respond into that situation in 2018 uh, so in 2018, I started digging, digging, and then, uh, you know, I came across uh, blockchain and uh, the different use cases. At oh, first, course. like everyone, uh, I just thought, oh, that's internet money, that's a uh, pyramid scheme, you know, that's uh, what most people, before they get to know uh, blockchain, think. And then... Um, Absolutely going in details and i realized that actually there were some amazing fantastic use cases and yeah. um, there was a real potential to uh, transform uh, the economy to digitalize some of the things or some of the processes yeah. and um, and also uh, a way to create value more value for uh, for for the users yeah and is that how sort of, uh, I mean, obviously there's no such thing as a straight line uh, in, in careers, but is that how you sort of like gravitated from that economics background and that corporate background into then maybe, you know, thinking, well, I need to like get myself across all this stuff. And then next thing you know, you're moving in different circles and you're kind of drifting in towards blockchain and you're diff you know, and you sort of got some attention uh, into XDC. Um, how was how was that little jump? like a love story? <laughs> when I discovered XDC uh, in um, 2019, um, 2020, um, yeah, yeah. and I started looking at the white paper. I started looking at. Um, I really appreciated the fact that uh, uh, the founders were looking at um, uh, an organic growth, not just pump mm -hmm. coin like we we've seen mm -hmm. some of the uh, on the market, and uh, that they're building really momentum. Uh, for the trade finance industry more precisely. And also I discovered down the line later on that Trade Phoenix is what the founders at Ulan Ritesh had in mind. And this is why XDC Network was developed for. So uh, yeah, I think it's anyone who has any experience or exposure with XTC Network would within five minutes would understand it. It has its foundations, its bedrock in trade finance. Um, so that leads us nicely into Trade for Next. It, it's definitely one of the more ancient in this new sort of blockchain um, network. Um, tell me a little bit about Trade for Next because it's it's been there a while now. Yes. So Trade for Next, um, I would say, was 
put in place and there were some case studies. Um, and then the founders realized that they had to develop a, a little bit more of the other side of things on like the blockchain itself. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so it took some time, but now we are on a phase where um, we are having pilots of different uh, projects and these projects have all different profiles and what we're trying to do at TradeFinex is obviously try to uh, address the trade gap which mm. was made a lot worse with the COVID crisis because all of these MSMEs and all the the, the quantitative easing and so on um, even though there were some uh, grants given to help businesses and so on, not all of them had the benefit, and um, a lot of businesses closed down. Uh, Absolutely, not because they were not profitable, but because they, they lacked liquidity. And, yeah. uh, and and this is the thing: uh, a lot of businesses, MSMEs, uh, struggle to scale up. Uh, when they uh, start to become successful because um, everything is there. I would say even sometimes the turnover, but uh, liquidity can be very quickly uh, made short. Yeah. It certainly has uh, seemingly come in leaps and bounds in the last two years in particular. Um, maybe that whole COVID um, dip gave um, the network and, and the developers and, and the infrastructure around XTC a chance to sort of really consolidate the vision, um, even to the point where we, I think we had the first Trade Finance Investors Day, which was, was that last year? Yes, uh, that was uh, in October. I think you were, you, you were definitely part of that. I remember yeah. seeing a bunch of posts on, on LinkedIn on that. Um, isn't that a, a, amazing to see the growth in the last, uh, two to three years in particular, were you expecting that sort of response from the, the community and the trade finance community? Tell me, walk, walk us through that, that, that event. Yeah, I think um, I kind of expected some of it, but I was, uh, I would say, surprised in a nice way because um, I realized that uh, it was happening. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Happened. Some of the banks were looking into it and actually doing uh, pilots. And okay. uh, it was the opportunity for me to exchange and get the real uh, you know, feedback of what was going on. And yeah. also, I think the COVID has been an accelerator because um, before that, there was no rush to move into a digitalization yeah. or accelerate yeah. or cut costs. Uh, and also, there, there, there are some targets for uh, 2025 and 2030 um, mm -hmm. that are put down for uh, um, as, um, the ESG and, uh, you know, all of these other uh, kind of uh, CO2 carbon reduction and so on. So obviously, when we use for MLTR, um, so what is MLTR? So it's the model law for, uh, you know, um, tradable documents. And um, so to, to have these digital documents being accepted uh, by a government, yeah. obviously, there were changes uh, that needed to take place. And I think the COVID era uh, uh, with the leadership of uh, the UK and, and some mm. other countries, um, we've seen things moving. But I think if we, you, uh, if we show uh, that there is a real value added and that there is a real, um, you know, cost saving and uh, the process are more efficient. I just give you an example. I was speaking to a bank who uh, had shipped uh, their documents uh, and the document got lost yeah. with one of the carriers and right. they were paying penalties because um, the, the, the shipment was stuck at the port and they couldn't yeah. do anything with it. So this banker was very, very annoyed because he's, he he was in a situation where he couldn't do anything because yeah. it's lost. And at the same time, uh, you know, every minute costed a uh, fortune. So, yeah. Exactly. So and all it takes is a few of those sort of situations from a, from a few different sectors or a few different diff banks and different geographies and then the critical mass will be here before we know it. Um, 
it's a very very uh, important point that uh, you know this is what blockchain can do it can have the traceability it can have the immutability and um, yeah it's it's in a lot of places it's, it's legal now so um, can you also briefly explain uh, you know I think there's a bit of a perception that trade for next is all about institutions but really it's it's heartbeat is the small and medium enterprises can we just yeah let's let's bring that back yeah so basically a trade phoenix as i was saying earlier we're trying to address the you know the trade gap and and um the heart of the economy uh, is MSMEs. I, I had the other day some figures. Some say seventy, some say ninety percent of uh, you know the the, the 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 revenue of some countries and places are coming from MSMEs, and it's also innovation. I mean startups mm -hmm. and so That's on. So um, uh, if you don't support. Uh, MSMEs, uh, you, you see very quickly that uh, everything becomes very centralized and and mm -hmm. also um, the innovation is going to be limited to certain use cases, you know? Yeah, um, so, And also, it's also about, for instance, having someone in Africa wanting to send something to the other side of the world. And today they are facing already a lot of barriers. Mm -hmm. um, things are getting for them um, sometimes complicated because there's new tariffs, new rules, new uh, things they need to comply with. Um, sure. And if we can remove from that layer uh, the financing and uh, the, the, docu the document layer and make it easier to use and easier to access, I think definitely uh, more small and medium enterprise will be able to do business, get the liquidity they need when they need it uh, with less friction. I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's almost what distinguishes XCC Network from a lot of other Web3 and, and um, blockchain type uh, networks is where we're almost swimming a little bit against the, the corporate tide in some ways. We, we want to put the power back into the to the hands of the of the developing countries and the SMEs. We want to give people a choice, and um, and like you said, I, and I love that point about innovation. It's it's not just the SMEs; it's it's the the future multinationals that are just scaling up now, right? It's it's these little seedlings, exactly. these little seedlings that uh, need cost uh, effective, and and things that are so much tougher these days with inflation and and whatnot it's 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 harder for these smaller smaller crabs to get out of the pot as it maybe was about 40 years ago and i guess every generation has its has its obstacles and and hurdles but um something like trade um trade for next can definitely open up those uh doors that at the moment are, are almost um bolted shut with uh with with high high cost uh loans and you know extortionate sort of um amounts of time that it requires to to get paperwork done um i i i was just wondering what is the sort of the process if an S, if an sme or a corporate a larger corporate wants to actually use trade for next and and take advantage of those liquidity pools and, and the automation that blockchain and that traceability that we were talking about is is it a simple i mean i'm sure there's a lot of kyb or kyc sort of AML sort of stuff going on there, right? Well, just to simplify the explanation, yeah. I would Please say do, they, would, they, would, yeah. they would need a, a, a custodian account, uh, ideally. Uh, for instance, we work with Propine, um, who then uh, can uh, facilitate the whole uh, flow. Um, we have XDC Trade Network, which was mm -hmm. uh, designed uh, to for the digitalization of documents and being MLETR compliant mm -hmm. for countries who have who have actually passed on uh, the law. So um, what we try to do is to concentrate on pilots that where the let's say the exporter country can be pretty much anywhere, but the importing country is already kind of compliant uh, nice. and yes. have the, the, the legal framework because you don't want to, um, you, you, you don't want to create more hurdles for the pilots and things like that, but we could do it anyway, 
Is it, and, is, is, and is that a big part of your position at the moment is to sort of, you know, be participant in this, these sorts of roundtables in various jurisdictions exactly. and, and, and creating these sorts of, you know, minimum viable product or yes. co, you know, part, things like that? Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, what, I just what, give you an example. Uh, we are working on uh, one of pilot between two countries. I'm not going to name uh, which ones. Sure. But... Um, what we've been doing is getting institutions involved, getting mm -hmm. uh, one company, which is mm -hmm. not necessarily a small company. That was a large one. But we picked that one because they were already familiar with blockchain. Okay. And uh, so it makes it easier. Everyone in the company is trained and familiar and comfortable. Uh, they, they have the, developed their own, you know, sub chain uh, a long time oh. ago, supply chain. So the idea was to um, get uh, a transaction, so something between that country and another, and map, and map everything that needed to be done in between. So, yes, uh, so obviously, this you need to get all the stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, involved. So whether it's government, whether it's ports, whether it's uh, uh, customs. So this, these are the kind of things uh, we're trying to 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 work on, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, I. I Maybe in a few weeks or months you will hear something about. Uh, well, know. I was going to say, I was going to say, you don't have to say anything, but blink twice. You, oh, no, 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 no. Blink twice if it's Australia. Sorry. <laughs> blink twice if it's Australia. You don't have to say anything, but if it's Australia, is Australia involved? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right, maybe not. That's okay. We we don't we don't want to um, press you on that, but you know, but if there is something happening in Australia, obviously. You know, you can talk to me. You can talk to me about it. Definitely. Yeah, when it, when it comes. <laughs> I'll probably. Uh, the, the, hopefully, I'll know. Yeah. I was going to say, hope, hopefully, yeah. I'll know about it before you. But if you know about it before me, you tell me. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and I know that uh, since the law for MLTR and EDTA uh, is an English law uh, that, that that was voted uh, in the UK, I'm pretty confident that uh, Commonwealth countries will follow. I know that. Japan, sure. Germany, France. Um, the, France and Germany are not English law, obviously, but um, uh, the US are on the line, and I'm pretty sure Australia would uh, would be. Oh best. yeah, 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 yeah. I've got my connections. We're we're not too far away, um, but uh, well, you know more yeah. than me. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, I, we'll 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 be having a conversation soon enough. Okay, hopefully. yeah. Um, so. You know, obviously, you know, we're just touching on this, but re regulations are obviously, you know, uh, super important. Um, you know, what do you think is the biggest hurdle when it comes to regulations? Uh, you know, is it is it is it a cultural thing? I mean, do you see, you know, no, some? I think, uh, I mean, the cultural element is there. Like, if you go to one country to another, uh, the way you're going to be changing things around uh, is going to be different uh, based on also on the priority of the country. Let's say there is an election or there are some other things happening. Mm. Uh, you're yeah. not going to come first. Uh, yeah. I think the national priorities come first. Um, yeah. Also, uh, I think all of them don't want to get it wrong. They want to do mm. it uh, thoughtfully. And so they don't want to rush a process without understanding uh, the intricacies and the implications. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the other thing uh, that came out from the discussions as well is sometimes just resources. Some countries mm. uh, they they would need to allocate budgets uh, yeah. with the right consultants and um, and, uh, and and get these things you know rolling. But yeah. first, before doing that, they, they need to understand what is their benefit. Some of them are waiting on somewhere else to do it and to see transactions and so on, yeah. Well, I can definitely see the importance of, of creating a, a real history of, of pilots and MVPs. Um, you know, the work you're doing here is, is, is almost like planting the tree for your grandchildren in a lot of ways. <laughs> And also pilots are interesting because they, they'll show you where things get stuck. Uh, yeah, and, okay. then, and then we can get the stakeholders together to work on these 
on those aspects uh, and see what can be done. Um, same, if something technically you didn't think of or a document that you didn't think you needed uh, and is not in, you know, included, uh, then you can have all of these consider considerations and discuss them and, uh, and, and it also even for the regulators to be involved in this discussion is very important because we are doing it. They mm. are the ones uh, deciding on what regulation is best to facilitate these things. So uh, if they understand what are the challenges of the ones doing it, then they can adapt uh, the texts to yeah. facilitate. Because the, the, the aim of a regulator is not to put uh, you know, uh, barriers and make things complicated, but just to, to protect fight. consumers and yeah. You know businesses and to do things within uh you know a lawful framework yeah well that sounds that sounds very good uh bit of uh counsel for everyone who's a little bit impatient with uh all sorts of different regulations in this space this will take time and i'll give you an example um for instance now france and germany are doing you know their thing but then we have another layer which is europe mm. yeah. so um the, the, this is going to be an ongoing thing yeah it's, it's not gonna yeah. not everything is gonna happen it's a journey but it's, it's a journey, journey isn't it yeah, yes. absolutely um one of the other things i wanted to ask you a little bit about was um you know uh is there a lot of um like when i said you you're a core member of xtc network is technically is that is that is that true or are you kind of prayed for next are you xtc network uh, i mean I mean, that... Phoenix, basically, what it is it's a marketplace? Um, oh. Okay, so where the DApps, the Web3 DApps that are developed on XDC, yeah. are going to be used. Um, so it's part of it, it's powered by XDC. <laughs> yeah, I, I, because I noticed you're in the offices there. Yeah, that's... yeah, yeah. So, so basically, <laughs> well, I did it's notice powered the office. by XDC, the founders. Uh, yeah. Behind it, as I said, had in mind Red Phoenix first before yeah, even yeah. coming up with XTC. Yeah. yeah. So, so that leads on to my question: Is uh, is there a lot of good support there from XTC Network, and and probably some of the founders and and some of the devs probably aren't, aren't too far away from earshot, so you don't have to talk too loudly. But it, what sort of support do you get, and what sort of support do you need on a monthly, on a month by month basis, and what, what's it like working there? Um, I, I like it because it's it's a decentralized, uh, you know, network. So um, everyone uh, is there to give you the information you need. Yeah. But at the same time, everyone is doing his own thing. Uh, yeah. So uh, you have I to fight for attention. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's I, I, I enjoy it because um, yeah. it, it, it offers flexibility and auton autonomy. You know, you don't have, you don't rely on the on too yeah. many people. But at the same time, there are things that we cannot do if we don't have any teamwork. So exactly, uh, isolation isolation doesn't work for for anything. Uh, decentralization doesn't mean isolation. And and looking further looking further afar in uh, Singapore. Do you have much uh, to do with XTC Trade Network? I mean, it's it's sort of a well, close relationship, Trade for Next. Yes, on some of the pilots, we we work, you know, uh, together yeah, yeah. because obviously uh, the layer of documents that will be used to raise liquidity on the DeFi protocol because yeah. Trade for Next is a DeFi protocol. Uh, how, um, you know, using FXD, so FXD yeah. is a stable coin. Um, well, that's that another I conversation, use, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 use, love, uh, I love, I love to hear what you know. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, you're familiar with, uh, you know, the, the the Anton and and Tyler and and uh, Manuel of Fathom Finance. Um, you know, a bit of a masterstroke, isn't it? FXD. Yes, I think it's a brilliant uh, concept. Yeah. Um, and I would say it's very intelligent the, the the way they've done it. It's over collateralized, and in the future we will see maybe things added to the basket, like mm -hmm. uh, CGO, like uh, tokenized gold, and, you sure. know, real world assets. And yeah. I think um, I think it's it's a, it's an amazing tool that we have. 
Yeah. And um, it's going to help grow the ecosystem, definitely. And it's just the, the way that it's dovetailed in there with Trade for Next and XTC Trade Network on that liquidity and, and that sort of trade document digitalization aspect as well. It's, it's, it's very elegant. I, I think uh, a lot of people are going to find the ecosystem become a very simple ecosystem to navigate uh, as the years go on. Um, is, is that also your feeling? Oh, completely. Uh, I think the, the aim is to remove friction from mm. out there. So obviously, yeah, yeah. we don't want to add more friction on our side. Yeah, yeah. But there are steps and things that need to happen, uh, you know, in order. Uh, we cannot, uh, you know, run before we walk. That's right. <laughs> but we are definitely really, I think, uh, at moving things, advancing. We are having some really good pilots with some really good conversations. And I'm yeah. very optimistic. Yes. Well, it, and this is what happens when you speak to the people who are actually doing the work in XTC Network in particular. You know, when you have these sorts of conversations with each other as colleagues, you realize how much things are moving. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of that information only comes in lumps for the general public and for the community. Um, but uh, these little kind of conversations, I think, uh, will go a long way uh, and should go a long way to helping, um, you know, uh, the broader, broader community kind of appreciate the little steps that I've been making, which make up the big leap. Um, so I really do appreciate. And, um, and what also what we need to keep in mind is that what we're doing, we are the, the pioneer in, in, in any step we're taking right now. So as a pioneer, sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Maybe it's your your a your pioneer. French accent. <laughs> pioneer, absolutely. In we my are definitely French accent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mademoiselle. <laughs> So because we, you know, when you're a pioneer, um, yes, yes. obviously yes. things take time. Yes. You, you get the challenges, but you also get the reward. Yes. And it's very easy to kind of, when you're on that pioneer journey, to kind of not see anyone else around you and it's all very quiet. And uh, it's, it's good, though, uh, to kind of um, have these moments where we can kind of get together and have a chat and, uh, and realize that we're... We are pioneers, but we're pioneers together, and uh, we exactly. can give our, each other the support that we uh, we deserve. Um, so obviously, nothing today was uh, sort of investment advice. Obviously, um, nope. obviously, consult <laughs> consult a proof fund manager or do your research before acquiring any currencies or whatsoever. Um, but uh, I know we didn't even really touch on on much about investments and, and whatnot. But it's always important that uh, we are just community builders and uh, we have a vision. And we are enacting that vision today. So, uh, Ben Baha, um, was oh, there anything? <laughs> Thank you. No, I, got there. I just want to add one thing. Is, Please, um, I was just about to say some closing remarks today. Yeah, I think what you need to keep in mind is Trade Phoenix is really the marketplace, the ecosystem, and we want to have borrowers, liquidity providers get together, um, and to match that offer, we have the liquidity pools that can be created based on the documents, digitized documents that we, we're creating with XDC Trade Network and Yoda Plus. And, and, um, and this is, um, this is the, 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 the big baby <laughs> that is growing up. Yeah. That's right. We want these liquidity pools just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, deeper and wider. And so that uh, we have more SMEs getting involved, even to the point where you know large, you know, massive corporates can uh, get involved as well. And uh, but uh, you know, from little things, big things grow. Um, thank you so much for your time today, you. Salva. And uh, I wish you all the very best for the rest of your Dubai day. Same to you. Bye bye. Thanks. <laughs>